in the process of changing this uh, tensioner pulley there. Is this? Oh, I'm changing the wrong thing. This is what's bad. It's the AC pump. I thought this was bad because something was smoking on it and growling. But now I got this off. That's that's fine. Not a drop of play in it. Turns easy. The new part. I guess it looks like an improvement over the old one. It's metal instead of plastic. But here's the actual problem right here. Look at this. The AC pump is bad. up with the diesel engine. We're doing the air conditioner pump, the, the driver's side door is messed up, it doesn't latch anymore, and let's look at the fuel filter. Alright, so the AC pump is more easier to do from the bottom. There's a ton of slop in this pulley, you can hear it grinding when it's running. And you can even see it melted. It was smoking at one point. If I don't change this, it's probably going to leave me broken down at some point. So let's fix it now instead of having to, to surprise fix it. All right, so there it is. This is the reason it was bad right here. It's just this end piece went bad. And it was growling pretty loud. I don't know, I maybe could have ignored it, but. And here's the date on it, 2002. That's the original one. All right, there's the new one, which looks the same. Let's move all the bolts over. All right, that's all bolted tight, wires on, hoses on. Let's get this belt back on. Actually, I can almost get that. Oh, I got it, never mind. Wow, that was easy. The AC pump's installed, we just gotta recharge the system. Let's check this fuel filter quick. I wanna see if there's any water in it. Wow, there's no water in that, look at that. If there was any water, it would have came out first, and it's that's that's good, clean diesel. Seems like it's fixed. I mean, at least it's not growling anymore. 
and that compressor is really quiet when it kicks on and off usually you can hear it but I guess in this case I can at least hear the motor rev down so so it seems like it's working I gotta fix this too this dial doesn't do anything all right the AC is fixed now let's deal with this door it doesn't shut anymore All right, the next thing I want to fix on this truck is with the door. It no longer latches. So you can see we got two problems. One, the hinge pins are worn out. So you can see the hinge pins on this truck. Look how much play is in the door. See, it moves like an inch. Two, what always happens on Chryslers is they don't make the metal thick enough. So you can see this is just like tin foil. And that happens. I had this happen a lot of different Chryslers. So let's uh, get that fixed. So we're gonna cut this bad metal out of here, but leave this, cause that will still locate our door latch. All right, one time I was driving this Jeep Cherokee, same exact thing happened to it. I'm at my friend's house, he had this MIG welder there. I weld it real quick, just kind of welded up all these cracks, jump in the car, driving it. All of a sudden the car starts filling up with smoke. The hole inside of the door, catches on fire. And then this stupid thing, this was all burning. So I'm driving, I'm in the village, mind you, and I'm driving this car. So I open the door, I'm holding it open with my foot, driving down the street with the whole door panel on fire. And then I drove the thing to the car wash and put the quarters in the, in the thing and used the car wash to put my burning door out. What is this called? this metal um, we'll need probably three inch angle iron eighth inch thick will be fine So thin. I'm actually getting decent results now. It's so hard. It's like welding like tin foil that melts the second you touch it.
Maybe that works. I'm spending a lot of time doing this. Door's so low. Yeah, it's shut. Very shut. Uh. Alright, that's how you got open. You can't see it, like... There we go. Oh, see, now I can see it. Look at that. Nope. All right, see, this is what you got. That thing right there. Just that's all that held it on. It's just plastic stuff. And it just broke. Oh. This is what I did. Just zip ties, but I mean it only had a brittle plastic thing holding it in the first place, so can't really call that a downgrade. See if we can fix this hinge. Probably gonna butcher that too though. Find the problem. All right, I got this door pin kit, but I don't see how that gets installed easy enough. So let's just get this door a little bit higher. Working. I kind of butchered it, but you know, most people would have just said it needs a new door. Worst case scenario, I just got to get a new door. I can get a door off a half ton, which will fit right on there. Usually those trucks aren't worth anything. So let's, uh, let's fix the heater now. Oh, this is going to be great. Watch this. Watch me fix this heater. This is what's going on with this heater. This style here doesn't do anything. I looked at it a little bit. This works off electronics. Let's just check for blown fuses first, then probably <laughs> probably break up the dash. That's probably the next step two. I can feel the air coming out of these vents. Right there, feel that, no problem. And you know, I hear like a, something running when I move this, but the problem is the windshield freezes up and you can't defrost it because that thing doesn't work. Wait, we're getting somewhere. Hang on. There's a screw right there. Just come off. There we go. 
Well, listen to this when I turn this. It's this guy right here. I think. What is it doing? It's not work. It's not working. Is what it's not doing. But oh, you can even see this thing spinning. You know, they could have just made this a mechanical lever, like in every other truck, and it probably would have cost less money to make it, and it'd probably still be working right now. Look at this. You can see. Just see it turn on this of a screwdriver. This is supposed to could be controlling the where the heat comes out. Doesn't do anything. We got that's something oh that does it that does it if you hold that in that position look at that well you can't look at it but watch see now I move it there now it's on Something else. I have one of these trucks with the, where the heat won't come out where you want it to. Th this is what happened in this case. This thing right here looks like it's a door broke. It needs to be in that position, up to the right. Then you have the frost. Guess they made it out of the same stuff they made the dash out of, and it broke for no reason. That's where you got to be. All right, I was trying to think of a way to make that stay in that position, but check, check this idea out I got. Watch. This would be awesome. Piece of conduit. This is going to be the uh, upgrade for these dashes. Cut a notch out of it. Looking good right there. Right there. Right. There. Look at this. I show you what we're doing. Look at that. Look at that. Check, this is some professional work right there. Check that out. So right there, we got the frost. Then check it out, when we put it on vent, nothing. We have vents, look at that. I'm trying to prove. Let me get something blowing. Okay, look at that, that's definitely blowing that. Put it under the frost, nothing. See it's blowing. Vent, 
Anytime you can take some electronics out of a vehicle and make it manual, where that will last forever, and this broke for no reason, that's a big upgrade right there. You know what I could even do is get a nicer looking knob instead of a piece of rebar. Actually, that's pretty sweet right there. I was finished putting this dash back together. Should I break it? No, I got it. There we go. The access dash, but. I mean, it wouldn't be a Dodge if, if the dash wasn't all broken. I'll just lay this back. There you go. That way you, that way you know it's a Dodge. Signature mark right there. Stick out of Doritos. Guaranteed the breaker, your money back. I'm loving that. I should sell these things on eBay as a Dodge Defroster. I think that's a common problem with these trucks is those things breaking now that I'm looking at Google. That's how you fix it right there. All right, I've been driving this truck a week or so now since I fixed that heater in the door and I put a plow on it. A lot of people keep asking me what I think about that new Tesla truck that just came out. Overall, I like it. I like that they immediately advertise a few features on the thing that addresses the issues on the pickup trucks that are sold now with you know the corrosion issues and the body panels being just made out of tin foil. Let's go look at a pickup truck that's worn out, that's junk and take a look at some of the design flaws on it. And then let's compare that to the Tesla pickup truck. All right, here's an example of a pickup truck that's worn out and it isn't worth fixing. And it only made it to like 100,000 miles. So let's look at the design of this vehicle and look for areas that could use improvement. The big thing that stands out, and this one's not even that bad, but is rust. The trucks that they sell now rust out way too fast. And the brake lines rust out. So you can see, like, look at the rocker panels here. You know, that's completely gone. The floor is gone. It's at the point where the seat isn't even attached to anything. It's just sitting on nothing. And typical, you know, Dodge door thing. Someone else rebuilt the door in this one, too, with thicker metal. But, and then ultimately, and then ultimately gave up on it. And this was the guy's door latch. You had to open the window to get out. You can see the back here, the bumper's all rotted out. And these tin foil body panels, the designers of this thing, they were going too much for pointless looks. Same thing on this front bumper, there's this plastic garbage that just breaks off. Let's take a look at the bottom of this thing. All right, so you can see here are real good examples of the rust on this thing. So you can see like the floors on this thing. See, this is, the floor is gone. This is the carpet. The wiring is always hanging off like that. The frame on this one's actually pretty solid though. I mean, there's heavy surface rust, but it's not about to break in half. Usually the, the GMs are the ones that break in half. The Dodge is the transmissions always go first. That's what killed this one. This is the third transmission in this truck. And the guy finally gave up on it. But yeah, this the biggest issue here is just the rust. Really, this manufacturer should have to replace this truck for free because it's made wrong. This frame could have been galvanized and it wouldn't, it wouldn't see all this corrosion like this. But that's one thing I like so much about the Tesla truck. There's no, it's not like a delicate body bolted to a frame like this. The whole body is like an exoskeleton frame made out of thick stainless steel that won't get smashed up. The bottom of the thing is probably completely flat with no drive shafts and stuff to get smashed off of it. That's the other thing with the bodies on trucks like this. They're so delicate. Any little thing, you tip them over one time, they get all smashed up for no reason. This could be built a lot stronger than that and still build it a lot lighter too that doesn't get corroded. Let's look at that Tesla truck and see what things are good about it.
this is what we're talking about here. This is the Tesla pickup truck that just came out in November 2019. It's not available to, for sale yet, but it's they say like a year. Right away, they're advertising some great features. Like here, it's made out of stainless steel instead of just regular steel that rusts out. And the body panels of the vehicle are actually like a structural component instead of just there for cosmetics. Um, and I like that there's no crazy stamped curves or anything on it. It's just all flat pieces of metal. So the specs here are pretty comparable to like a three-quarter ton pickup truck, so it can tow seven tons. Um, it's, it's very fast, so if it's electric motors. I drove a Tesla Model 3 last week, and that thing was extremely fast. Plus, it was completely quiet, which was nice. And the auto driving feature was cool, too. I mean, you could the car literally just drove for you. There's not a ton of information about this vehicle yet, but just the fact that it's made out of stainless steel instead of mild steel and won't rust out right there it's worth it to me the way they have it set up is you can you know pre-order them so i think it's worth it i'm definitely getting kind of torn between the tri-motor and dual motor obviously rear wheel drive that's worthless but yeah let's get the good one by now really what i want to see is a pickup truck that lasts at least 50 or 60 years something that's really something that's designed very simple very easy to fix won't rust out, won't get smashed up. Make it look nice and simple like they did here, all flat panels, stainless steel. They don't even you don't even need to paint stainless steel. It'll be like a DeLorean. All right, I just placed the order. Hopefully this thing's available soon. Hopefully it's cool. Looking forward to it.